bring him a little closer to the fence. Papa. Good boy. The safe comp works pretty good. Uh, first time ever using it. Um, Chuck and me. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I'm going to work with it. Okay, we've got the case involving Pharaoh here. He's got a problem with high dominant energy. It gets him in trouble, okay? So what we want to do, we want to explain why Pharaoh has high dominant energy. It's very simple. The reason is no one told him not to display high dominant energy. A high dominant energy dog it will corrective bite. Normally that means one bite. If it's cornered, threatened, abruptly grabbed, things of that nature. But we want to teach our dogs to avoid under any circumstances. So that's what we're here for. We're here to prove that this situation that occurred was culpable on all humans involved. You see, when we get a dog, we bring it into our world for selfish reasons. We want love, we want companionship. When we lose our boyfriend or girlfriend, or we get a divorce, or it's the midnight hour for somebody, where, where everything seemed to be bad and, 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 and thrown out the window, that's when we go to our dogs. That's what they give us. They give us the love and the loyalty that nobody else will. But what we forget as humans, that when we receive that from a dog, we are obligated to give the dog what it needs to be whole, productive, and happy. What is that? The dog needs to know how to deal with seeing another dog, how to deal with visitors, how to deal with things other than getting excited, high dominant, jumping. That's what we need to do. And we wanna let them know right off the bat who's in charge. So let's take them out and do some general exercises like making him calm down, correcting him when he's not calm. And then we may move to a first exercise uh, involving swimming. This builds a bond between the dog and the, the hand. That's what we need. We need to give the dog what it must have to be productive and successful and feel good about itself. We need to give him a pack leader, number one. Number two, we need to give him definition on what his job is. His job before was what he taught himself, to act like a maniac or act high energy and dominant every time he gets excited over something. We're gonna change that. We're gonna show him that his job is to be calm and avoiding in situations that he doesn't understand. And number three, when the dog does what we want, displays the behavior that we taught and we appreciate, then we give the dog affection, a double pat, to let him know that's exactly what I wanted you to do. So let's take the dog out. Notice that I've got the tennis racket here. This is all for safety. People wonder why I have a tennis racket. It's really to protect the dog. Let's say that we were dealing with an aggressive dog and I gave him an opportunity to bite me. Well, guess what? That makes it all worse, <laughs> right? We don't want to, to create aggression, we want to stop it. So the best thing to do is to have safety measures in so the dog is not set up to fail. One of those safety features is to make sure with the new dog that you always have the tennis racket in front. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the dog stays in the car until I release. This is the first communication with the dog, the first sign of pack leadership. If the dog waits and comes out calmly, then I've achieved one of my goals. Now I'm gonna let him know that he can come out of my car. And notice, it's gonna be a lot more calm because I calmed the dog's energy before he came out of the car. Rule of thumb, an energy that you leave a dog in is the energy that a dog will display. Now, I give the dog a double pat. 
That lets the dog know that that's the way I wanted him to come out of the car. This is very good. The next step is to give the dog general obedience training. For example, walking, stopping, walking, stopping, to make sure that the dog is listening to us. If the dog listens to us, then that means that we did our job with establishing a bond. And I just want you guys to know that this dog was unwalkable before I got him three hours ago. The reason I say that is not because I'm a miracle worker. It's simply for humans to understand the reason that I fix dogs so quickly and so efficiently is because I'm not training them. I'm talking to them. Every dog is born with a language intact. Imagine being a human, you pop out of your mom's womb and then you stand up and say, hey, where are we going guys to celebrate my birth? Well, humans have to learn language. Humans have to learn context. Humans have to learn about their world. That's because they don't live by instinct. Dogs, on the other hand, they live by instinct. They are ruled by instinct. They don't interact with life like humans do, problem solving and all of that. They react to life in one of four ways, become dominant, run, avoid, or submit. So let's start the walk. Move. So now you guys see that this dog let me put him in the car, let me show him how to exit the car properly. Now he's letting me show him how to walk and stop, walk and stop. I use the terms move and freeze and the dog is doing it. It just needs to know what to do. So let's continue on, move, freeze. Move, freeze, notice that the dog moved, I'm going to correct and replace, this is all dog language, this is why the dog gets himself in trouble, because he doesn't know what to do, so I'm going to correct and move him right back where he was and make him sit and then give him the stay sign in his language. That's the second time. This is the difference between a high dominant dog and a dominant dog. A high dominant dog always takes a few more repetitions to get it. That's the difference between a dominant and a high dominant dog. The high dominant takes a little bit more repetition to get the point across. So I'm gonna pick up where I left off at and tell him to come to me again. Notice that when I got on the ground and touched it, the dog did come to me. That's because it's its language. If he doesn't come, you move him in. 
Double pat means good job coming to me. So let's do it again. Do it again. Good job. Notice that time it got a little better. If theory is correct, it'll get better every time. Theory wasn't quite correct on that one, so we're going to keep on doing it. Good job. Good job. Now he gets the affection. Now he gets the affection. It should have been two pets, but I got excited. <laughs> it even happens with dog whispers. Three. really great we got an extra here today we got a gentleman loading a boat into the dock we can't go into swim right now but the fact that the dog is calm while this is occurring is great notice that the dog is to my side or behind me at all times this is very important it's also important to have your body in between your dog and any object of fixation like for example the cameraman's here my dog's here my body is in between okay now the engines are starting, the dog still isn't reacting, which is very good. Notice that I'm correcting anytime I see any sign of the dog worrying about the boat. Now I'm gonna give the dog a double pat. This is what we have to do. This dog needs to understand everything. You have to explain it to him. Not just this dog, but all dogs. We tell them how to respond in every situation or every stimulus that they see. We're supposed to tell them how to respond. That's our job as pack leaders. A high dominant dog is the type of dog that's really not afraid of anything. So I've classified this dog as high dominant. Theoretically, if dog language is nothing but mathematics, then the dog is programmed already. So a dog that's high dominant is not gonna be afraid of the water. He's probably gonna go right in and tinker around with the water. He may not go in it, but he won't be afraid of it. Okay. Now that was the first time that this dog has been in water. People wonder about my theory about dogs. My theory about dogs and language must be correct because I just explained to you that all high dominant dogs will not be afraid of the water. He's trying to get back in. That's because he's high dominant. What does high dominant mean? It means you have to be a stronger pack leader. You have to let your dog know exactly how to go to the water. We just saw the dog go in unrestrained. Now we're gonna show you how easy it is to make the dog go into the water calmly or showing him how to deal with the water or how to deal with people or how to deal with dogs or how to deal with cars. It's no different. It's just the object of fixation. So now we're gonna show the dog not to pull me into the water because it's high dominant. We're gonna tell the dog to change your energy to calm 
and walk into the water the way I want you to do it. Now I'm going to tell the dog in his language that he can go into the water. Now look how he approaches the water. He approaches the water my way, the safe way, the unchaotic way. I'll add, I can tell, I'll tell him he can go in just by touching just like a regular dog would in a pack. And he goes right into the water. This is how easy it is to fix a dog with behavioral issues. We first must understand that they're not behavioral issues. That's a human term. Dogs can be reprogrammed like that. So it's not a behavioral issue. It's just the issue of finding out what you don't like, correcting that, and then when the dog does it the way you like it, then you give the dog a double pass. Now, when the dog goes in this time, it should be more along the lines of what I just taught him. Dogs aren't stupid, they retain. Flawless. Okay, right now what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that this dog could meet somebody new. They did, that's my assistant. He's doing pretty good. Now, theoretically, you know, everybody wants to have assurance that uh, when we fix the dog, that the owners can do this too, or everybody. As you can see, he's having no problem with the handler. He's respecting the handler. That's what we have been teaching him since he's been here. So go ahead, uh, start the walk. Pick a line, pick a line. Stop the dog. What a lot of people may not understand that a dog needs certain things to be whole. It needs to find a pack leader, it needs direction, and it needs to feel good about the direction that it gets. If he does it correct, he gets affection. This is what he lives for, he's not human. He doesn't want to rule. Roll the dog around. So as you can see, the dog learned how to walk from a pack leader, that was me. You see, some people think that only the trainer can do it. That's not true. Once a dog learns something and it's given affection, it knows that it's correct. Then it becomes the dog's job. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be on this dog like white on rice. <laughs>